Hello and welcome to another tutorial in the Smile Game Builder tutorial series. Yesterday's tutorial had to be deferred today because I had a stomach bug or something. Isn't that Murphy's Law? When you plan something, something else happens to prevent you. Anyway, if you haven't already, I'd recommend you view the previous tutorials first. So last week's tutorial was a little longer than I anticipated. I'll aim to keep these videos in between 15 and 20 minutes long, but sometimes they might still go over. This means that in order to keep within this range, I'll speed through certain sections. So if you have any questions about the tutorial, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Before we start, I'd like to mention a few things. Firstly, thanks for all the comments and questions. Keep them coming and I'll try to answer them as best I can. The second thing is that because I'm working three nights out of the week and have several writing projects on the go as well, I'm unable to invest as much time on RPG Maker, Smile Game Builder and Game Dev in general as I'd like. Unfortunately, this also means many of my own projects. I can only do a tutorial once per week. Sunday or Monday seems to be the perfect day for this, so every Sunday or maybe every Monday I'll upload a new video. And to those who have asked questions, some how-to questions, I have forgotten about them. I'm sorry, I just don't have the time to fully invest in them. But rest assured, I will over time. Okay, so let's begin the tutorial and let's have some fun. Here we'll look at customizing some of the preset events and briefly at the events tree. This is a map I created for the events tutorial. Admittedly it's not a very good one but it serves its purpose and will be used throughout some of the other tutorial events tutorials. The first thing we should do is put a door on the house. <coughs> under events, doors and stairs, and then a door, obviously. Um, let's choose a link to another, another place, in this case inside the house, like so, and then the house actually has no exit door so we'll add one there as well leading back outside and while we're at it let's place a bed um, under objects indoor single bed and we'll put it there rotated that's about right it's flush against the wall we can now double click on the bed to bring up the presets let's choose bed recover there is a bed that's a little impersonal don't you think so let's change it to something more personable that's my bed Shall I take a nap? If you select yes, it'll fully heal the party's HP and MP, but what if you wanted to change the parameters a little bit? Heal a portion of MP or HP instead. To do that, you'd click on convert to advanced event. Incidentally, this little dialog box will pop up every single time you advance edit. To be honest, it's annoying as hell. There should be a facility to turn it on or off, maybe a checkbox here that gives you the option, or maybe some somewhere in the main settings. Anyway, you will be presented with this. This is the events tree, and this is where you can add routines and subroutines. Now if you click on the Add Event panel, 
it'll show the available events commands. I'll skim through these very briefly, but bear in mind this is extremely limited in what you can do in favor of the presets. So many of the advanced events um, will be limited as well. Okay, displaying messages and images, messages, conversion images, obviously. Event condition switch checks. As you can see, it checks various events, conditions, and variables. And you can also set up the variables here. Player movement events. Everything to do with movement, teleporting, and character settings. Stats items. Items, stats, and party members. Special effects, as it says, music and special effects and including things you can do on the screen. And finally, battle store game system. Here you can enable or disable various options and create a store or in or put a battle. So, if we were to click on the full heal party, we should delete it first and then add the restore reduce HP. Change or increase its values. Um, this is a set amount, not a percentage. Unfortunately, this needs to be done with each party member and repeated if you want MP as well. There should definitely be an option to apply this to the entire party rather than individuals. So put 50 is the amount there. And so, so when you sleep on the bed, if you've lost your HP, 50 HP will be restored. Let's so back to the start menu, the start map. Let's set up a cave event. And whenever it decides to load up, I think it's slow because I have other things open at the same time. And um, it's getting a bit confused. Right. So to the cave event. This is, um, the cave entrance is a graphic I created myself just for this tutorial. So, still under doors and stairs, there should be an option here, cave entrance link to another place. We do the exit with the other cave entrance. And then of course there's nothing there on the uh, platform. So in searchables we can place um, we can place a chest. Let's do the acquire money one. Put it right here and say we'll give them generously a thousand gold. It should be rotated. Like. Hmm. Okay, move that up there then instead. Maybe not. 
just stick with that one. <clears throat> okay. Now we need to set another cave entrance here for obviously going back. Cave entrance right there, leading back the way we came. And finally, the warp gate. <coughs> um, you can you can actually right click easily to select an event, and you'll come up with these event settings. So when you do that, um, we can select up another warp. <clears throat> okay, let's warp there. And we're done. It's ready to play test. Uh, it takes a bit to load. I should try and close down some of these other things I got. And so, there you go. That's a really nice snowy effect. Anyway, straight, go into the house. Where's that bed gone? There it is. That's my bed. Shall I take him out? Yes. <laughs> I think in the future I'm just going to skip through these loading screens. And we go up the mountain to that cave entrance. On the right side with the chest. So we go back through the cave entrance and down and this time we'll go up to the warp and voila that's it for this tutorial it's a little it's a little more brief than the others but um, in the next one and the next few We'll delve into a little bit more into doors and transfers and also have more of a focus on characters and party members. And uh, most of this will be customized in the actual events tree. If you like this video, hit the like button below or you can subscribe for more videos. And as always, you can check out the RPG Maker blog or follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Um, all of the links are below. That's it. Thanks for watching.